Welcome, everybody, um, to, well, the first after a, an enforced break, shall we say, though two, two of them are online. And uh, thank you very much for every attendance, because when we thought about this, uh, obviously, obviously, the last pandemic, we weren't really quite sure if anybody would be turning up, to be perfectly honest, um, with all the sort of nervousness and things that go about, obviously, the last couple of years. So we're very much grateful us and the organised committee for, for your attendance and we're lovely to see you all here and obviously we are well aware that some people have, haven't made it through the last couple of years and obviously our condolences go out to those of the societies involved in that. Um, looking back, as you might tell from the, our three VIPs sitting in the front row, <laughs> um, today's quite a special occasion for us, it's our 20th anniversary or lecture and little did I know 20 years ago when I started this with uh, Biddy, after we did some work, uh, four years service with uh, East Lothian Council, that we'd be here today. But we hoped it, <laughs> and we hope we've got to go for a few more years yet, he says, um, both personally and as an organisation. Um, <laughs> but sometimes at the moment, I'm not sure. Um, but no, thank you, because we've had a range of speakers. Obviously, I mean, some of the talks we've been doing over the last couple of years have been quite groundbreaking and of national importance. I mean, it shows the benefits of... Uh, developer funded archaeology and the work that myself and my colleagues and the local authorities do. But also the fact that we've got lots of community archaeology, that's really one of the things that's come through over the last 20 years or so, that sort of work. And we've got talks on that today. And we've, if you see you go back in the, on the 20 year programme, that sort of a theme that's come out and we're quite welcome to it and helping it and really spread the word of our heritage to everybody. Um, so. I'm not going to waffle on too much, you'll be glad to hear. And you're glad to hear there's no tram tops either, because we did notice in the first one um, that there was a tram top. And I get, oh, we've got to do another tram top. But be warned, there will be a tram top next year. <laughs> so if any of you don't turn up, uh, there's photographs today, so we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> but I'm glad to have a, a, the Lord Provost, Robert Aldridge, uh, for Secretary of Emma Council here today, Provost John Macmillan from East Lothian Council and Kavina Watson McAteer, Scottish Border. So, we're going to say a little welcome and thanks in that order. So, without prevaricating, <laughs> um, can I, I invite Lord Provost Robert Aldrich to uh, come up and say a few words? Well, good morning and, and thanks very much for the invitation. Um, it's a really great pleasure for me as Edinburgh's Lord Provost to join <laughs> Provost John Macmillan uh, uh, from East Lothian and convener Watson McAteer from Scottish Borders in welcoming you all to this 20th Edinburgh Lothians and Borders Archaeology Conference. It's a fantastic annual conference and uh, which has been organized by the City of Edinburgh Council and East, East Lothian Council since 2002 with the Scottish Borders joining forces in 2010. Um, over the past 20 years, I, I, I don't know but I understand, <laughs> um, the conference has explored the results of often nationally important archaeological projects which have changed our understanding of our past, providing a really important opportunity to hear and discuss first-hand accounts of the significant archaeological fieldwork and research being undertaken in the region overseen by our three archaeological services. So since 2002, uh, my, my sources tell me that the conferences have welcomed over 3,250 guests to learn, to be inspired, and to discuss the main archaeological issues of the day. And I'm sure this year, of course, will be no different. Probably even better, I have to say. <coughs> um, 20 successful years is no mean feat. And I would like to take the opportunity to thank all those who make it possible. I understand you've been involved since the start. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, so, so well done, absolutely well done. Um, the, the Edinburgh Lothians and Borders Archaeological Conference, of course, plays a key role in the region's uh, archaeological work and allows the expertise of our brilliant archaeologists, I'm, I'm complimenting everybody here, are brilliant archaeologists and community groups uh, to be celebrated. So I'm absolutely confident that the next 20 years will be just as insightful, just as instructive and interesting as the previous. Thank you all 
for coming. It's great that everybody's here in person again, and I really hope you enjoy the conference. And it's my pleasure now to pass on to convener Watson McAteer for a few words. Thanks. Thank you, Lord Provost. Conference Chairman, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, as convener of Scottish Borders Council, that's the equivalent position to Lord Provost and Provost, it just doesn't sound as grand. <laughs> it's an honour and privilege to join my colleagues from Edinburgh, the Lord Provost Robert Aldridge and East Lothian Provost John McMillan, at this is the 20th Edinburgh Lothian and Scottish Borders Conference. While we in the Borders may be classified as still relatively new to the conference, with our involvement now extending to almost 12 years, it'll be 12 years this year, we remain enthusiastic and totally committed to this important event that we continue to be very proud and happy to support. The Scottish Borders is a large area, most of you will know that, covering a wide and diverse landscape of over 4,700 uh, 4, square kilometres. I usually do the miles, I don't know who put that in. <laughs> Easily defined as being located 12 miles north of Carlisle and 12 miles south of Edinburgh, so the big chunk, spreading to the east coast but does not include the Firth of Forth, the wide rich history, heritage and archaeology. There are now over 23,500 sites recorded in the local historic environment record, and these are only the sites that we know of, and there's likely many more yet to be found. Within my Hoyk and Hermitage ward, and you probably wouldn't have guessed I'm a Hoyk man, but I'll be watching the rugby later, <laughs> I'm privileged to host the historically significant Hermitage Castle of Mary Queen of Scots fame and of course some fairly dastardly deeds over the years, as well as the First World War unique Stobbs campsite, just two of the many thousands of archaeological sites to be found in a beautiful landscaped area that I expect will be instantly familiar to you. Historic sites and monuments are well recognised among the many assets of the borders with some well-established tourist facilities, such as the abbeys, the historic tower houses, the castles, and the country houses. Off the beaten track, there are many other landscapes consisting of hill forts, stone circles, and field systems of prehistoric date with little in the way of modern features nearby, including the historic built environment. Scottish Borders Council is delighted to continue to offer their full support for this conference, recognising that there are countless activities spread over numerous local archaeological uh, societies and groups, but so, perhaps something like 44 dedicated groups located across the entire borders. We are committed and passionate about a region's rich history and culture. All of the work is undertaken by interested individuals and organisations where partnerships and sharing has been a recurrent theme, encouraged and developed each and every year that this conference has been ongoing. Today will be a no exception and new partnerships will, I hope, be created and developed, either as a result of the presentations or by visits to the various displays. This is the 20th anniversary conference, and Scottish Borders Council is pleased to continue its involvement and support, as well as working with Edinburgh and East Lothian. This, link, this event links with all our own council aspirations and agendas for the future. We take a few targets from the Scottish Borders Council plan. This includes make the most of the region's natural and cultural heritage assets. The local history, heritage and archaeology of a place often makes that place itself. It can identify, enrich and empower local communities. And we will, I am sure, once again, experience that in each other's company today. From, whatever you, from wherever you come from to be here today, whatever your background is as an individual and organisation, contract or community group, can I add my welcome to you all I hope you have an enjoyable and productive day amongst like-minded friends. Thank you. I'll, I'll now hand over to the convener from Provost for East Lothian, John McMillan. Good morning, and just to point out that I am standing up. Um, Lord Provost Robert, um, convener Watson, friends, I've just thrown my speech away. I'm a product of I Spy Books of McMerry Primary School, Ross High and Edinburgh University. And when I was reading those I Spy Books as a 10 and 11 year old, I didn't realize that we had archeology span in East Lothian. But you archeologists and you friends of archeologists, you don't make it easy for us speech makers. 
Dr. Coralie Mills will talk about dendrochronology. And I remember being told about rhododendrons and chronos. So <laughs> although I can't say dendrochronology, um, I do know what it means. And I think that's what I'm looking forward to learning about. I'm going to come back this afternoon and I want you to enjoy all of this conference, to appreciate all of the hard work that goes on, all of the interest and the enthusiastic groups in our county, work around the wagon way, work around excavations. And as I stood up, I did think that maybe if you could use me in a little pit, because I'm not very tall, <laughs> please do. The excavations of the Edinburgh and Leith Glass Works we're going to hear about in the update on Roslyn. Watson talked about communities and it makes us think about the past and all that our predecessors, our ancestors came through and how they used and used local material and lived in their communities. And yesterday is a fine example of climate change, how they lived and adapted. Please enjoy today. Please join in, debate, discuss. Think about the future of our young people and how you and we engage with them. Celebrate the 20 years that you are here to think about and reflect on. But if we have reflection without acting differently and learning from the past, then probably we aren't learning at all. I want to thank by name Andy, Stephanie, Liz, Helena, Chris, Keith, Debbie, sir, over to you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. This is the most nervous part. Um, especially with uh, my track record this year with IT, which is not very good. Um, right, well, thank you very much. Uh, I, I can't, Lord promise, promise and convener <laughs> uh, for those kind words. Very much appreciate it. I know everybody in the organised committee is very thankful for you to turn up in, for, in today. Um, just before I go on, a couple of quick messages. Well, first of all, we'd like to thank, uh, if you all come here, I said that, but also our various sponsors. Now, we've had lots of Sponsors of the years, but uh, this year, our uh, obviously historic environment Scotland's continued um, help on the event since its inception uh, has been valuable and it is continued to be invaluable. But also, a lot of commercial companies and other organizations. And this year, we're glad that Guard Archaeology and AOC Archaeology Group have sponsored this. Without them, I'm afraid our ticket prices may go up, <laughs> but we value that. And honestly, we try and keep our costs down every year. 